Welcome. It's Thursday, June 25th. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kylie Norman, and this show is called The New Normal. Our owner is Bobby Norman. Now, as a woman, women's health is always at the forefront of my brain. Um, whether I'm talking about race, I'm still talking about my health. Whether I'm talking about my job, I'm still talking about my health. Being a woman is very exciting, but it comes with a lot of thought about how to keep your body healthy. And so tonight we're going to have with us Miss Judy Jerome, uh, who's a pre and postnatal uh, fitness workout expert. Um, she's going to give you her official title when she comes on, but she's a trainer. And her training specialty is for that mommy pouch. And also for women who, after they've had the body, they're trying to uh, have the baby, <laughs> which was a body, right? After they had the baby, trying to get that body back in shape so that you can feel your best you. Now, you have to love the skin you're in. All of your stretch marks, all of your rolls, all of your all, they have to be loved by you. Because if you don't love that body that you're in, you won't be able to um, be healthy in it. We as women have a, so many images that go across the screen in social media, especially where they tell you what beauty looks like. And I have become victim to all of them. I've become victim to say that I'm not tall enough. I have victim to, I've become victim to say that I'm not small enough. I've become victim to call certain parts of my body ugly even. And it took me years, I wanna say about a good 17 years to figure out after I had my first baby that I was very beautiful regardless of the shape that I took on. But I had to acknowledge I had a new shape. And after every pregnancy, I got a new shape. And so it was very hard to see myself as pretty based on the images that I seen, although my husband was a very supportive guy through it all. I mean, regardless if my weight had ballooned back up to pregnancy weight or it had taken a dip, He's very much loved me. The kids in my house, they love me. They've never said a bad word about me, but the thoughts that were in my head about me um, were not healthy. And so people like Judy, people like my personal trainer, in addition to the people in my home, help me see that my body is not who I am. I am not my body, but I do need to have good health and I do need to promote good health so that my kids will also be healthy. Um, there's certain stubborn areas that I have, um, a pouch. I don't know if everybody has it. Some cultures call it the fupa. Some culture, uh, cultures call it the pouch. Um, whatever it is, it's that lower abdominal area where um, the elasticity kind of like gives away. And as a result, um, I've been working on it for some, some time. I have the personal pleasure of having a girlfriend named Ori who showed me um, a great plan to help me lose the weight. But I also had to incorporate training in order to get those muscles back engaged, especially in the abdominal area. And it's been a journey. Um, I've been since last June uh, fasting and praying about um, I'm in my way to better health, but I've also taken on, like I said, a personal trainer. I've taken on talking to different healthy people. And so tonight, She's going to be here in about two more minutes. We have the pleasure of having Judy Jerome, who is going to share with you her health tips. Um, I'm just making sure that you understand there are no fast fixes in being healthy. Health is a everyday, all day concern, and it starts with your thoughts. I'm always a promoter of if you think healthy, you will be healthy. And so this journey of weight loss or health has really put to the test what I believe about myself, how I see myself, and definitely what I say about myself. So I've, I'm always working on saying great positive things about my image. Now, as a black woman with a dark complexion, I've never had a problem with that. But as a mom that grew a little more heavier in size. I had a lot of issues with that. I mean, go figure, right? Um, but I've worked on it through a lot of consultation with different friends who have trans, you know, transferred knowledge to me in order to make me see my health. So I hope you ladies and men um, enjoy this segment tonight. It's going to be about women's health and it's entitled, So the Baby's 20 and You Still Have That Pouch. So we're going to work it out with Miss. Jerome, who's coming in today. Hey, Jerome! <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm well. 
Oh, you look all workout ready. Yes. <laughs> so do you. Yes, I'm ready. I got on tights and a t-shirt. Classic mom outfit. <laughs> so, Judy, what do you have for us tonight? Um, well, we have, I have a couple of exercises just for um, postnatal focus, mostly, as far as like how you would re-enter um, after having had a baby. Okay. So is it like my babies are 20 and 11? Is this for me? It can be. Yes. Yeah. So the, the process that takes a woman from pregnancy to birth is a big deal, as you know, <laughs> uh, does a lot of things to the body. And sometimes things don't always go back exactly where they were before pregnancy. Um, so there's oftentimes, um, muscle compensations that happen where, you know, if you think about as your belly is getting bigger and your hips turn out, Ooh. your inner thighs get more stretched and the outside of the hips get tight. And sometimes that doesn't always come back into um, the positions they were in before pregnancy. So right. there can be tightness in areas that didn't exist before and there can be weakness in areas that didn't exist before. Um, so a lot of it is learning your new center of gravity again, learning how to find the deep, deep pelvic floor and abdominal muscles that um, go through trauma from birth. Gotcha. And so it's like waking up those areas again, getting them to fire again, getting muscles to fire in the right order at the right times. Um, it's a lot of different things that just, you know, happens when you have a baby. <laughs> And when I was telling them, I had to learn, I'm still learning because I can say some horrible things about myself, about my body. And I had to learn to like switch my speech. Um, I say, I'm a dark skinned woman. I could say great things about being dark, but then you tell me about my stomach and I could say some real hurtful things to myself. So I had to first learn to love the skin I'm in. Um, yeah. Whether it's stretched out or fully intact, it's mine. I'm yeah. here, I'm healthy and I love it. So Full yes. disclaimer, we don't think anything is wrong with any mommies, but we know for some of us, we would like to strengthen and keep ourselves in health. Yeah, and it's, it's um, bef I just, my son just turned a year old, which we yes. talked about a little bit, um, and I've been prenatal certified for about eight years, so I worked with um, a lot of women through pregnancy and after, before having had kids myself, so I had a textbook knowledge of everything, and you know, s certain um, things in my mind about how I would understand how this would all feel. Right. Um, but coming at it from actually having had a kid, I can see. <laughs> Whole nother can of worms. Whole nother can of worms. But yeah. one thing that every woman I've ever worked with after having had a baby, and then I felt it myself as well, was the idea of, or the feeling of that your body doesn't feel like your own anymore. Right. You know, that this person takes over, they leave, then they're still attached to you because you have to feed them and you have to heal from birthing them and you're not sleeping and all your attention is going to this other person. And so it's, it's the wanting to feel like yourself again. Correct. How do you feel like a woman? Right. And so, so when someone comes in and the end of, you know, everybody always has weight loss as a goal. It's just... Always, me too. But it is. We're losing baby weight. <laughs> okay. um, but similar to what you were saying before, um, a lot of times what we try to do is focus on what are the other things that you want? Is it that you want to feel strong doing a certain activity? Is it that you have a pain pattern going on that you would like to be relieved of? Is it, um, you know, sleep that you need stress relief? That the finding the other goals that are outside of just looking a certain way. Correct that can really help with someone getting back to feeling like themselves again after. And I said it right before you came on, social media plays a huge role um, in what is beauty and, and what connotes um, female beauty for yeah. anyone. And so they have a very streamlined way and we all, very few of us fit it. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's also interesting to see how we're supposed to do something in a certain amount of time. Yes. Um, there's a lot of like, by six weeks after a baby, you should look like this. By three months after a baby, you should look like this. By six months. And everybody is different. Everybody's totally different. How your body heals is different. How you reconnect to certain things is, you know, and so it's that forgiveness of yourself that yeah. 
allowance of like my body will take its time and I'm going to respect it and do what I can for it, but not judge it. You know, it's, no. and, it's a and, layered thing that happens on top, on top of layers. I was sharing with you yesterday when we spoke briefly that, you know, after I had my twins, I was, I'm five foot one and a half. I like to put my half 220 pounds. I delivered two healthy babies. Six pounds, three ounces, yes, and five pounds, 15 ounces. And the first thing I asked that doctor is, is this stomach going to go down? Because after I gave birth, it was still sitting up high. And I was like, yeah. oh. And I saw the woman in a belly shirt going to see her baby. She was still looking all good yeah. in her midsection. And I was still looking very pregnant, which in pregnant people are beautiful, but I don't want to look pregnant, not pregnant, right? Um, because of my own vanity. And I was like, when is when is this going to happen, sir? And he said, time. And that has always been the case, time. And it's the hardest thing, but, um, you know, when you, I don't know, when I look at him and see him a, a year old, and I'm like, how are you a year old already? How has a year gone by? It's true. And then I think like, all right, it took me a year to get back, to, pretty much back to where I feel like I was before I was pregnant. Right. That's not that long. I mean, if you think about the scheme of life, it's not that long, but we, we want it to be immediate, you know? Instantaneous. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of lessons. You know, I think ultimately it's when you can learn the lessons while you're going through it, it, yeah. it helps, but it's, it is um, the battling of our surroundings, of cultural expectations, of so but many different I'm things. Friend. I, I saw the other day, my daughter showed me a photo of a woman who took her um, bathing suit picture with all her stretch marks in full glory. Mm -hmm. And she said, I was blessed with the honor of making a baby. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, she is one bad chick boy. Because mm -hmm. for me to show my stretch marks to the world, it would take a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> a little assistance. A little, a little, a little courage juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I am, you know, I am pretty personal about that area and sensitive about it in some ways. But one thing I've come to love about it is that it was the source of life. Yes. So I respect life. I respect it immensely. And so I have to, you know, I'm still working. It's still a touch and go thing with me. Yes. My words shift quickly when it comes to it, but I'm working on strengthening those words to love the skin I'm in. Um, yes. It's yeah. hard. It's a, it's, a, it's a constant conversation, I think, with yourself. Yes, yes. about how beautiful you are. Yes. And you're amazing. And yes. you are awesome. And you're doing things that are phenomenal. You know, all of that talk, that self-enrichment speech. All right. What else do you have for us, Judy? Judy? <laughs> um, well, I did want to talk a little bit about um, diastasis, which I mentioned yesterday. Um, as far as... Uh, you know, my OBGYN hadn't talked to me about it. I think you said yours hadn't talked to you about it. I knew about it because of this certification that I had to work with women after birth. Um, and it just is a, one of the fascinating things about women's health where it's a, a big left out conversation that can actually be an important conversation to have when someone wants to exercise again or if someone has, um, back pain or um, a, a pooch that they just can't get rid of and they're like, I'm doing all the right things and I've lost the weight, but I still have this pooch. Why is it here? Right. Um, it can answer a lot of questions for a woman who's had a baby, right. but it's not talked about very much. Um, the baby is one or 21, either yes. way. And, the, and, and diastasis is also a condition that can happen to power lifters. You could never have a baby and you could be someone who lifts really heavy weights Right. And a diastasis can form. And basically, it's just a separation of the two sides of your rectus abdominis muscle, which is the six pack abs. Yes. Out of a layer that looks really sexy, you know, when you're wearing a, a little top. Yeah. Um, and the, the line in the middle, the tissue, get, can get stretched out from pregnancy. Oh. And it doesn't always come back and knit back together right away. Right. Um, and so if there, if that separation stays past a certain, um, uh, diameter, then it would be considered a diastasis. And it would just mean that there are certain exercises to do that can help re-knit that area, um, or exercises to stay away from that can make it worse. 
Okay. Um, but it's, it's one time I was doing sit-ups and my stomach bulged out. Yes. Right. So that's an example. Yeah. Uh, uh, like sit-ups are a no-no if you have a diastasis. Um, things where you're crossing and crunching. Uh, even planks, depending on how big the diastasis is, you want to hold off on. But there are other exercises that target the deepest layer of abdominals and your pelvic floor that are great to do first. That can help with that re-knitting. So then it prepares your body to be able to do things like planks or mountain climbers or um, crunches or any of the other amazing fitness things that we do. <laughs> what I love about your premise is that... Um you know, although you're a young a mom with a younger baby and I'm a mom with the old, I can still do these exercises to see these results. Yes. And, and so it's, you know, there, there are women, you know, like our parents age probably that may have had a diastasis that was never talked about, never diagnosed. I believe my grandmother. Yeah. They the probably dealt with some kind of aching or, you know, something exactly. going on that they just figured was part of what they had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it, and the thing is, is, you know, depending on how big one is, you know, like they go by width of fingers. So if you have one that's wider than a two finger distance, that's considered a diastasis. Um, but some women can have as much as four or five fingers separation. Wow. Wow. Um, and if you have one that's really big, it can be hard to fix that without a surgery. You know, it's, it's always good to try first, like right. what you do yourself. Right. Um, and first pregnancies, you know, a lot of women can get away with not having one. Right, it's true. <laughs> Usually if you've had more than one child, there is one that happens a little bit. Um, I was coming from a fitness background and ended up having a small one myself. So it's really, uh, you can do all the right things and still get one. You yeah. could do all the wrong things and not get one, or you can land somewhere in the middle. But there are um, exercises that are great for reconditioning that can help with that particular condition. Now, as I'm sitting here now, are you able, am I able to self analyze? Like if I have a one, two, three, four, yeah. five? Yeah, what we can do is um, when we come down to the mat in a laying position on your back, I can show you how to do that, which I would love to do. Cause you're gonna show us if we have this diastasis or not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then um, there are just a couple of exercises um, that I wanted to go through that are ways to help with regulating pressure mm -hmm. in your abdomen, which is part of what causes a diastasis and how you would fix it um, with how your, your diaphragm muscle along with your um, uh, pelvic floor muscles and your, it's called your um, transverse abdominis. They all play together like a, a canister with pressure. Okay. So, you know, I don't know any of these. I'm still like your stomach. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like when you, when you inhale and your diaphragm expands here. Okay. Uh, as it's expanding out, your pelvic floor releases down. So like they play together. So then when you're exhaling and the pelvic floor comes up and your belly goes in, mm -hmm. the diaphragm is then releasing. So it does this like back and forth. Got you. Okay. So it's like a machine, you know, and when the pressure is working well, you are able to stabilize your spine. Um, you don't pee when you cough. Oh, There's good. no pain. You know, like when things are working well, it, it works well, but things can get out of whack, not right. just from pregnancy, but even just from stress. Like uh, people who breathe up here and breathe really tight and it causes stress in your body. Like this, uh, this neck breathing that a lot of us get caught in actually creates more like fight or flight going on gotcha. and it has a hormonal response and everything. So some of the breathing work that we do gets you back in touch with how to breathe deeply and get more oxygen and get this canister, this core canister working. And it helps to uh, help with relaxation, which helps with hormonal adjustments, which can help you sleep better, which then you might lose a little bit more weight. And you know, it all affects you, all affects everything. Okay, you say weight loss, you always got me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> straight so, my core. I'm like, I'm there. Yeah. You know, uh, so it's a lot of things. You know, like, like I know you've been working out for a while too. Yes, I've, I've been. Working. It might just be like finding little like tweaks in what you've already been doing. You know, finding an activation and a deeper muscle in a more complete way yes. is the goal. Yeah, um, and then from there, when you have stability 
then you can push your body in a safer way. You know, you don't have to be concerned about injury as much because your brain is firing all the right places at the right time. Right. So it's so, basically how do you get back one with your body? Yes. Yeah. And whether you were doing it before you were pregnant or not, um, this oneness will at least help you achieve better health. Um, yes. Because as yeah. a mom, whether the baby is one or 21 or 101, they yeah. can bring stress. <laughs> and if, and if, you, if, you, if someone's just never been able to connect to their body after having a baby because of the stress, right. uh, it provides an opportunity for someone to just give themselves an hour of paying attention to their body. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, breathe and feel my muscles and do something that feels good in my body. You know, and exercise doesn't feel good at first for a lot of people, but once you get to a certain mastery or a certain strength or uh an, a, an appreciation mm -hmm. of what you're able to do i think that's where a lot of people can kick in with the sticking with it and the lifestyle and um yeah. continuing without feeling like oh i have to exercise again yes yes which which is a lot especially when you have these images in your head right. so uh, a lot of self-talk and a lot of positive reinforcement um helps Yes. Yeah. And you have to give it to yourself. I know as women, we, we may look for the outside compliment, some of us more than others, if at all. Right. But if you can motivate yourself to get this going, you, it's a lot better off. I found that's personal yeah. for me. Looking fishing for compliments just made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're like, they didn't say something about that. And then you think, why didn't they mention that? Right, like I, I look so going much as well as I thought it was. <laughs> well, the one time where you've been, I, this happens to me all the time. I, I get really good into my groove and someone says, oh my God, you're putting on weight. And I'm like, I've been working on weight. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you silence the noise and just continue to do what's right by your body? Right. And it's a, you know, again, it's, I, I, I have had a lot of clients in the past too that I think they're like, oh, you know, trainers don't worry about this stuff. And it's like, no, most trainers are trainers because we've worried about this stuff too much. And you find a, a piece with it or a place where you can manage it or, um, you know, so I, I, I always feel like I'm a work in progress and I don't have all the answers for everybody. It's, you know, I can tell you this is what has helped me and I can share that with you. And if it helps you, great. And maybe it won't, but we can talk about things and find the thing that does work for you, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's key. Yeah. It's all that, you know. It's all that jazz. But we love our babies. We love our babies. And we love the men that gave them to us. Yes. Yeah, for a minute, I used to tell him, like, you should have had these dead on the stretch marks, and then we could talk about it. <laughs> well, there was a joke. I don't know who said it, but that if, if men were the ones in charge of having babies, there would be no children. <laughs> <laughs> who knows if that's true? I don't know. But, uh, you know, usually adages tend to ring home true somewhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm very thankful. I, my baby has a, a wonderful daddy. And yeah, I, mine do too. They have I, great you know, he's very he always encouraged me, no matter what I look like, that I was beautiful. Yes. And um, even though I have looked at him several times and said, you didn't see these 50 pounds creeping up? Like, what were you doing? Um, I'm very grateful and humble that he's never, he doesn't speak about weight with me. Even yeah. when I'm on, like I've been on a good streak lately and I'm grateful, but he, he didn't say, he hasn't said any, he hasn't said anything good or bad. He just said, oh, you're looking good. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't try. Yeah, I remember too, I was very concerned about um, what he would see in the delivery room. Oh, and like, okay. Maybe don't look. <laughs> Couldn't stay up here and just, you know, don't ruin things. And he was like, I want to see my kid being born. And, and it was this like amazing thing to him like he just had this like um like this was such a cool thing and i was like really that was cool for you to see are you sure well the, my daughter 20 years ago was a natural birth and that was with all its you know ah, and yeah. then my sons with the uh twin was a yeah. c-section which was a crime scene um <laughs> it was very gory and yeah. i was scared 
but he was looking over the curtain and then they had to tell him to sit That's down. Like not supposed to do that. <laughs> and I later asked him like, what, what was you going to do? <laughs> he was like, I was just seeing what they were doing. So I was like, oh, I didn't understand. But he, he saw and he wasn't grossed out, but he's not that type of guy. So I was like, shout out to Bob Norman, owner of the new normal show. <laughs> so God bless him. God bless all the parents that's out there. However, if you have a baby, if you don't have a baby, we hope that this information increases you and that you find a mom who has given birth um, and tell her she's beautiful. If you do that, you got it all from this show. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so are we going to the mat? Um, sure, well, the first thing that we can do um, from a seated position because it's not something that- um, I gotta get the chair. Hold okay. on. Fabulous. I'm back. Um, this is just a quick um, pelvic floor wake up exercise. Um, so you might have heard of Kegels. That's like the popular. Oh, that's what I'm doing uh, always. Yeah. Especially when you're on the toilet. Yeah. So a lot of people think of, of it as stopping your pee, right? Okay. Um, and that's part of it. That's the, that's the, the anterior part of your... Well, explain uh, what a Kegel is just so people know. Uh, so uh, Kegel is an exercise where you're activating um, the muscles that stop the flow of your pee, mostly is what people are familiar with. So it's like that pulling up and in when you're like, oh, I have to stop peeing, that action that you do, or if you have to hold it. Yeah. You know, that's when you're contracting those muscles. And then when you're letting it go, then you're relaxing those muscles. So that's the, the anterior part of your pelvic floor. Um, but there's three other points. So there's also like, if you think of your backside, like if you were gonna stop um, gas, mm -hmm. that's the posterior chain. So you have the front and the back, and then there are points that connect at the side, which is the hardest one to sense and feel, but it's almost like you're, the bones that are underneath your, hips, like when you're sitting in the chair and you feel the bony part of your butt. Yeah. It's almost like you're thinking if those bones were going to come closer together. Oh, like squeezing, because you know a lot of, some of us got a little less bone and way more meat back there, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking about like those, that, those two yeah, points. Right? Okay. those points. So when you're activating all four points, mm. it's like um, the, a visual that works is if you're pulling a tissue out oh, of a yeah. tissue box. Right. So like you're contracting all four points to pull up and then you would relax all four, four points to release. Wow. Um, so the, so the two different ways that you work them are if you're going in a slow fashion, like controlled, which is what we're going to, we're going to look at both of them where you do like a four count, like pulling up and in for four and then seeing, can you slowly release for four? And that's the kind of control you want. It's your slow twitch muscle fibers. And that's for like um, literally holding your organs in your body. Okay, so I got to review this and I'm, I'm, I have a potty mouth. So I'm trying not to use the most vulgar language to get okay. this correct, right? So we're going to try with the sign. And I'm a very, you know, I'm a, I, I, I have words, but yes. you know, sometimes it's easier to convey it the other way. So let, like me the, the toddler words, like when you're teaching toddler. Toddler, yeah. toddler, toddler friend. So what I want you to do first is to just think about the front. So just thinking about the stopping your pee. Okay, I and got you. If you can just, and, and viewers at home, feel free to try this as well. Yes, please. Um, so just so just like pretending like you're, if you're sitting on a toilet, um, can you stop the pee and see like how far can you pull up and in with that part? Got you. And then can you slowly release it? And what we're looking for is can you can you isolate like one area at a time? It's a little like mind game almost that you're playing with your pelvic floor. And this is to strengthen the core. Yeah, this is like your pelvic floor, which is part of the what makes up your core musculature. Okay. Um, so it's if you think of like a a paper bag for groceries, it's yeah. like the bottom of the paper bag. So if it's not strong, all the groceries can fall out. So you want to think about this is like to strengthen that knitting. Okay. To keep everything inside. Right. Gotcha. Um, okay. again, just, let's go now to the posterior. So trying that with the stopping your gas or stopping poo. Right. Uh, see if you can isolate that. Okay. Up and in and then release. Yeah. So it's a little weird to think about at first. Let me tell you what the issue is. It's the release. 
Yes. And that can often be the thing where right. people get so into the, like the, I have to tighten, I have to tighten. Yes. But that the, it, the it can over tighten. And yeah. what you want is that you have full range of motion. Wow. Okay. So you want to be able to do both. Okay. That's what we do the, the slow up and the slow down so you can get the control of both. Yeah. But the trickiest part is trying to get those side ones in that in and up. And this is, I, I, to this day, it's still hard for me to feel it. I just picture it in my mind and hope that it's happening. That's what I did. I made yeah. a mental picture like everything's up and yeah. everything's down. And so what I want you to do now is to try to attach it to your breath. So on your inhale, you're just going to think release and relax because that's when your pelvic floor relaxes when you're in. You when I go in, I'm relaxed down there? Yes. Yeah. That's not when you inhale, it's, it's, it, it's releasing. And then when you exhale, that's when I want you to think like coming up and in. And then you're going to inhale and just let it all release. And then exhale and think pull up and in. And what happens is like when you're inhaling and your diaphragm expands, it's allowing that pressure to help release. And so that's why you do it on the inhale. And then the exhale, when you're pulling in, your diaphragm is going up and your pelvic floor muscles go up. Does that make sense? That's, it makes sense. It's a little uh, tricky. Range of motion, but you, I literally have to say like, Shh, let me concentrate. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is one where it's like, like having a, a five minutes to just be like, I'm going to be by myself for a minute and just think yeah. about this. Because it is a brain workout versus like, Ugh. you know, yes. it's really connecting to that. All right, now what we're going to do are the fast ones. Okay. And this is where you can control more, like if you feel like you have to pee, like if you're running for the subway and you're like, Ooh! and your muscles stop that. Yeah. This is like to help with that. So when, when you have to command something really fast for control. So this one's not as connected to breath. You just want to think like, can you um, tighten, release, tighten, release, tighten, release, and just see like, what is the pace that you can get? And can you still think about that tissue pulling out of the box? Can you get all four points? to work together. Okay. So you may find like one thing is easy, like stopping your pee is really easy, but the other one's a little like not quite with it or you can't feel the sides. I see in my facial expressions like. Yeah. yeah, in my prenatal yoga class, we would all be like. <laughs> but that's why it's just for you. It's not a performance for anybody else, but no. it's a good thing to think about, about can you, Activate with control, both up and down, and then can you get that fast control? Well, that's that's this, that's this different. Point. Yeah, you know, the pe the side muscles coming in is new for me. I yes, never, that yeah, I never it's and, and it's and it's hard for me to even describe how to, how to activate somebody because yeah. it's it's a it's a part that we don't think about. You no, know, <laughs> I didn't thought that I never thought that was relevant. I just for a nice feature, but never for like, can we control it to make it? <laughs> Um, so that's just, you know, this you can do like in a chair. I like it because you can feel your bones. Right. And so it gives you a little bit of feedback on like what you're doing. And also because when you're on the toilet, you're sitting, it's kind of like a familiar position. Okay. Um, but you can do this laying down as far as. But you know, my right. mom might have had something because she used to say at the stoplight when you had to wait to cross the street because she wasn't a driver she would pull all these muscles in. She said she would contract and do her Kegels at the stop sign. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Yeah. Then, and then walk. And I used to think like, she's a weird- Why is she doing that? Yeah. yeah. She's a real West Indian woman. They have like some strength, right? But now that you're talking to me, I'm like, that lady was on the yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And again, it's one of those, it's a very personal thing. It's a personal part of the body to talk about. So some people are like, you want me to do what? I'm like, what are we talking about? My mom about? was one of those um, God bless, rest her soul, um, Elaine. Elaine was one of those people that talked to you about like your inner health and those personal areas because yeah. she talked always like when you get older, when you get older. It's not about being 20. It's yeah. about when you're 120. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, now that you said that, I'm going to give her a mental check. Like, ooh. <laughs> All right. Now we can go over to the floor. Okay. La floor. And we're going to come onto your back. I'm just gonna... the camera adjusted. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Yes. This is Judy Jerome. We're doing postnatal okay. for, yeah, for the baby. Yes. That's but also if you're someone who's never had a baby but you 
pee a little when you sneeze or cough or run, then all this stuff is good for you too. Because it's just, you know, anybody can have pelvic floor dysfunction. Yes. It's just that pregnancy is one of the things that causes it. Exactly. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on this um, deep breathing technique. Okay. So you're going to be on your back. On my back. You can think about your spine on the floor for a second. And just check in. You want to feel both shoulders, both sides of the ribs, and your hips on the ground. And then you're keeping your natural S curve. You know how you have that little arch in your low back. Yes. You want to you want to let that be be there. Don't try to push it down into the ground. You want it to just natural line on the floor. Okay. Um, then you're going to take your fingers and you're going to have your thumbs on the back of your ribs and your index fingers on the front of your ribs. So near the base. And this is just for feedback here because when you inhale, I want you to feel the expansion here, like to the sides and back and to the front, not as much up here. So having the hands here will just give you the sense of do you feel any movement or is nothing happening? Because wow. uh, that's where you want it. So you're going to inhale and you want to think expand right underneath your fingers. And then you're going to exhale and you should feel the belly deflating a bit and the closing of the ribs happen. Okay. And then you'll do that again. You're going to inhale and then exhale through pursed lips. And you may feel your pelvic floor naturally engaging here. That does connect a little bit. It's not going to be quite as much as what we were doing, but you should feel a little bit of um, talking to each other here. Um, all right, just do a couple more. So inhale and expand at the base of the ribs. And then exhale. And you want to see how much air can you get out. So you want to get fully expelled of that air. And just do one more. Let me just see. Good. Now are you able to feel your abdominals firing here? What are you sensing? I'm sensing my abdominals, but they're a little weak. Okay. What do you feel working a lot? Anything in particular? The pelvic ear right in the, the lower abdomen area. Perfect, perfect. That's okay. what you want. That's exactly what you want. That's great. What you want to think about is if you feel a lot in your chest or if you feel sometimes clenching in the jaw or tensing, you know, you want to, yeah. there's an opportunity for you to also suss out where you're, points are for tension that you just go to. We all have places we go to when you're concentrating, when you're stressed, when you're in the middle of work, you know, whatever, where you just hold. Um, and here's where you want to think, how do I release all that other stuff and just get my center to focus? Definitely the clenching of my jaw, which, which is true because yeah. I'm a grind, I grind my teeth at night. Yeah. So that's a great place for you to check in with here. So just thinking, you know, can I let my toes relax? Can I let my shoulders relax? Can I let my forehead relax? And just feel that tension building in the deep abdominals and pelvic floor on the exhale. That's where you want to build the tension. So it's, again, it's just a, a moment of like, in a sense, relaxation, because you're letting stuff go that you don't need to hold on to. And you're getting that oxygen in, you're breathing deeper, so it will help with getting yourself more to a centered, calm place to then focus. So that's the purpose of this is to like bring you back into yourself, find this muscle, find this area, get oxygen in, and it preps you for all the rest of the stuff you're gonna do. Um, so great. I'm glad you felt it in the, in down here right away. A lot of times it goes up here or in here. I've so been meditating. So meditation causes you to reset yeah. that, that. Perfect. Yeah. All right. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to go into a bridge here. Um, what, you know, as I mentioned briefly before with how hips rotate out with pregnancy, sometimes inner thighs get overstretched and we get tight through the outer thigh. And this is just a way to help with refocusing your alignment. 
Okay. Um, it also helps with activating up your core. So when you're getting inner thighs activated, it can help activate your pelvic floor and your abs all the way up your leg. Um, so if you have something nearby, do you have like a pillow or something like that you could use? What do you want me to do with it? We're going to squeeze it with your inner thighs. Oh, you know what? I'm going to find... Oh. It can be a foam roller, it can be a pillow, it can be a, an exercise ball. Um, oh, my foam roller is upstairs, but I'm going to take this paper towel. Perfect. Use household items. We're in a pandemic. <laughs> All right, so you just got to place that between your thighs, wherever it's comfortable. And then utilizing the same breath, so the same like knitting of your abdominals on your exhale. Yes. And squeeze your glutes, push into the heels of your feet and lift up. And then once you're there, add a squeeze and hold on that pillow. Wow. Like paper towel. So you should feel inner thighs and butt muscles and lots of abs. Those are the yes. three things I want you to focus on. If you feel a lot of top of the thigh or um, hamstrings, again, give yourself like the moment. Can you let go of one of those and refocus on your butt and your abs and your inner thighs? Okay. And then don't hold your breath because that's the thing that always happens. To oh, yeah, that's what was happening. I was almost being out of breath holding my breath. Yeah. And then you can do a little release and come down. Oh. And then on your next exhale, we're going to come up. We're going to do that again. Exhale, push into the heels of your feet, squeeze your glutes. Abs are knitting in. You're thinking pelvic floor in. And then squeeze that inner thighs together. And then go back up to your jaw and your neck and your shoulders and release there. Okay, yeah. It's really trying to focus where you want your energy to go. Where do you want your efforts to go? And then come back down. Good. Now, were you able to feel all those things? Was there something that kicked in that you're like, why am I feeling this area? No. Definitely my buttocks. Definitely the pelvic. Um, and like around in the hip area. On the outside or inside? On the outside. Okay. Like, like glute area or like thighs like here? Oh no, glute area. Okay, perfect. perfect. Right. All right, so now let's bring this into, come back on up because you are, you know, firing away beautifully. So I want to give you a progression. Okay. So you're going to come up into the bridge again. And then I want you to just extend one leg straight, keep the pillow or the paper towels in between your knees, and then back down. And you're going to go for a walk here but you want your hips to stay right where they are. So you need lots of abs. It's like your abs are holding your leg in the air. Right. Keeping the butt muscle of the foot that's on the floor needs to squeeze a whole lot to keep you supported while you walk. And then again, go back up to your jaw, go back up to all the places that you tense up and see where you can release. Oh, yeah. Here. Now my paper towel, I'm losing it. Ah, squeeze those inner thighs. I know, that's <laughs> losing it, but I promise you, I'm like thinking about my jaw lightning. Good. Beautiful. And then just one more. I have lost count, so we'll just do one more. Oh. And then take your hips. Good, and you can take this away. Wow. This is like a lot of stuff too, like when you're, if you're new after having a baby, like you've just been cleared to work out, um, these are good exercises to start with because it's all like refocusing. So it's not exercises that you have to like, you know, kill your heart rate with, or you're picking something heavy or it's like, you know, it's just like a centering, getting back into yourself. And um, trust me, they're not easy at all because engaging. Because it takes focus. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. Um, all right, what was the other one I went? Oh, so let's come onto your feet now. Oh, okay. And we're going to look at squats. Oh, awesome. Which are very familiar to everybody. Um, but I want you to think about, I'm going to move you again, um, keeping all of these same things in mind as you're doing another exercise like this. So even though we're now doing a more like, okay, I could wait this and do like some, you know, awesome squats or I can play with whatever you're doing, having that same control of your center while you're doing it. Okay. So you're going to do slightly wider than your hips, like maybe shoulder width or even a little bit wider, whatever's comfortable for you for a squat. Okay. Um, and you're thinking slight turnout of the toes, but not very far. Okay. And then if you're sitting into the squat, 
I want you to think about keeping that, um, your abs tight as you're sitting down, weight is in the heels, and then you're firing your butt muscles first to come up. Okay. So it's still like abs and glutes. There's lots of different types of squats. Some squats are more focused on squats. Um, you know, we're doing like a basic like sitting motion. And you want to think like hinging at the hip and squeezing your butt to come up. Okay. But it's a good test for um, can you keep this engaged? Do you feel your back wanting to arch? Things like that. Right. So I put it here so you could see me better. Yes. And then, uh, I'm going back. Yes. Now, right. when you sit, um, the tendency looks like your back wants to do a little bit of this. Yes. I want to see if you can use your abs to come back under a tiny bit. Okay, so go under here. You can hold on to that activation while you sit in the squat. Okay. So it's just thinking about that deep abdominal connection even here. Like, right. can you still feel the lower abs doing a lot of supportive work? Good. So Seven. I don't go as deep. That's what I know is. That's okay. You don't have to go as deep. Okay. It's, it's you want to honor like your alignment before everything else. Like and a demi Good. So make sure you're pushing your hips back like you're going to hit somebody with your butt behind you. Oh, okay. So here, right here. Yes. And it's hard to do that and keeping your abs all the way in, but that's what I want. Right here. <laughs> Good. Right here. Good. And do you feel your butt muscles driving you to stand? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Good. Like you want Good. To yes. That's gorgeous. And so when this is feeling really focused and you're feeling your butt muscles in charge, your abs engaged, no pain in the knees, Right. Your back is feeling good. That's when you can be like, all right, let me add weight. Let me add speed. Let me add gotcha. you know, some other intensity challenge. Yep. So fine with me. I have to hold my hands up because if I put my hands any other place, I start to look a little weird. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. You can do the, the barbell squat. Do you do the barbell squats? No, no, I'm not that advanced. That's where you hold. <laughs> maybe you should be doing barbell squats. Maybe, maybe right? Like, let's not give my trainer any ideas in case she watches this. <laughs> it's a, so squats are great because it's a functional thing. You know, everybody, you do them all day long. You're sitting and standing all day. So being able to do this properly with the right pressure in your, um, in your core, you know, feeling the right muscles working, being pain-free. Yep. Yeah. Then if you think about it, if you have a 20 pound baby on one side of you or in front of you, you know, like how do you negotiate baby is the next step. So it's like we look at alignment, we look at core um, strengthening, and then what are the expectations of everyday life as a mom? And so we'll train like, you know, like things like um, if you're on the floor and you're holding a baby, how do you get up? off of the floor. Oh, okay. The ways that you uh, bend over the crib um, when you're reaching the baby up overhead. So it's a lot of uh, movement patterns focusing on how do you stay in proper alignment using the right muscles. All that. So basically how do you use your baby is like your dumbbell. Kind of, yes. <laughs> Exactly. And I do think about that when I pick them, you know, when I pick them up, I'm, I'm always like, all right, abs in tight, shoulders down, drive from my butt muscles. You know, it's really easy to do something wrong. So, right. so as a mom whose kids are, I'm not picking them up at 80 pounds and 100 plus pounds. What I hear from you is that what I am doing is being conscious all day as to making sure my jaw is relaxed. My breath is not in my chest. Am I engaging my core? If I'm sitting down, you know, pulling in those four points, relaxing those four points. Yeah. Um, take a moment and get up and do some squats because with being home a lot, you don't get up and do that fluid motion. Yeah. And just because my babies are bigger or smaller, how do I engage my body in this process yeah. all day? Yes, yeah. And not just like That's a quick workout. Yeah, and then if, if, if there are things that you enjoy doing like jogging or workout videos or strength training, you know, all of these things um, can be incorporated into any of those activities. So in any of those things, you should be thinking about what is your core doing or if there's a pain pattern in your body, pain is telling you something. You know, there's a difference between working and being uncomfortable versus yeah. pain. And so if you're like, my knees hurt every time I run, mm. there's something you can look at. Like, is it 
Is it, is there something happening in your pelvis that's unstable? Is it a pounding thing? You know, like, like there are ways that you can uh, investigate uh, the cause of what's, what you're feeling. You know, it's like not ignoring what you're feeling, like honor your body and yeah. work with your body with where it's at. And let it talk to you. Yes. Let it talk to and you. Sometimes you don't want to hear what it has to say, but. <laughs> you do have to honor that it's speaking. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then it's, it's a, uh, you know, building from there. So, you know, uh, when, when after, after I had my baby, when I first started doing some core work again, and I couldn't even hold my, like when I was laying down, I couldn't hold my leg up in the air. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I can't hold my leg in the air. Like, right. what happened to me? I don't know. This sucks. Like, yeah. And it was really annoying getting back to like the thing that I could do before. Yes. But in the process of doing that and reconnecting, like you, like your, like that I, I, it's hard to describe like without it sounding hokey or whatever but it no it it's is. not what are you saying is you, you appreciated the process to get you back to where you're going and you appreciated some of the differences that your body now has yeah um but you still strive to get it back to the healthy point where it was beforehand because you don't need to be a woman of your our youthful age not being able to hold your you know yeah but uh, yeah, and then just being able to run around after the toddler is nice. Oh, man. Even when they're older, I appreciate going to the park. Yeah. And being able to run, chase, or go in the backyard and shooting hoops with them um, and not coming in and feeling overly winded or with pain afterwards. It's, it's a blessing. And so I want to focus on that, not just losing weight, looking good in my clothes, but being able to do a push-up and manage my weight and, you know, on my hands and, Oh my God. You, you know, I have, a, I have a son, I know you have a daughter, but um, I think it's a, a big deal for daughters to see their mothers uh, caring about health and, yes. and yeah. exercising. Culturally. In, uh, in Black culture, um, you know, we eat some ways and do some things as we get older that mm -hmm. we get away from good health. So mm -hmm. the older we get, I think we need to turn it up a lot more in terms of achieving that so that we can pattern ourselves for our daughters and our sons. So my sons watching me eat healthy has caused them to eat vegetables for dinner. Um, and then like my daughter, she's not really big into either, even fish, but she doesn't eat meat at all. So, you know, health practices, yeah. health, good health practices go hand in hand with all of this. Yeah. And but see, you gotta, it, not just talk about it. Yeah. Yes. Cause, but you gotta love the skin you're in. So yeah. wherever you're at, you're beautiful. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. oh, Judy, any final closing words for us as we wrap it on up? No, no. It's just you know, think of think about your pelvic floor. Pelvic floor is important. Pelvic floor, <laughs> pelvic floor, everyone. Salute the pelvic floor. And you know, push yourself as much as as feels good. You know, it's it's great to work hard. I just care so much about people doing it safely. So yes. you know, like get your foundation and your you know all the little guys strong so that they can support you when you're doing the big crazy stuff. Awesome. Now, how can people reach out to you if they want to learn more about their pelvic uh, floor? The, the company that I work with is called Pongo Power and their website is pongopower.com. Pongo and, spelled P-O-N-G-O. Yeah. And, um, and we're based in Brooklyn, but you know, right now everything's virtual. So yeah. I trained somebody in Switzerland yesterday, which was oh. very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yes, yeah, so we have a lot of blogs up there. We have information on our, um, online classes that we're doing and currently our entire team is pre and postnatal certified. So nice. anybody who is interested in that or has questions about it can message us and, uh, one of our fabulous people can get back to you. Good. And although we didn't touch on men's health, um, are you able to also train men as well if they're seeking? At Absolutely. And men need to work their pelvic floor as well. Their pelvic floor is important. They do. They don't think they do. It's okay. as important. Um, and also proper breathing techniques, especially with men who want to lift heavy or do intense exercise. There's a lot of uh, deep abdominal work that they should be doing as well. Okay. But yes, we have, we have a lot of different trainers who we all have um, some of the same certifications like the pre-postnatal. 
And then we have some trainers that focus on powerlifting and some that are yogis and uh, folks like me that really love like the, the pre postnatal community and do a lot with that. So we have hands in a lot of different areas. So if there's a particular thing that you really want to learn how to do and do properly, we have somebody who can help you do that. Well, it was such a pleasure talking to you, Judy. You too. Thank you for having me. I really love having you on. Um, you know, you taught me quite a bit. I didn't know about those, like I said, those two points, I'm leaving away with the two points that's down in the rectal yeah. area, bringing them in and bringing everything in. Yeah. Um, that's very important. So I'm going to add to my Kegel. Yeah. Uh, okay. And I'm breathing. Always breath, I know, is amazing. But um, bringing it in and exhaling and tightening and inhaling and releasing. Did I have it right? Yes. Yeah. For the pelvic floor, yeah. When, yeah. you, when you're inhaling, it's relaxing. And then when you're exhaling, it's... Yeah. So that that's a very new concept. I didn't even know that that was to yeah. be done. And um, I'm going to steal the pillow exercise. I'm going to actually get the pillow or my... I have one of those rolly balls so you can lift and put down. And, okay. lift. Yeah. and it's just a good, you know, uh, focuser, you know, where you get to really think about all the muscles you want to be right. targeting there. And paying attention to where I hold the stress yeah. so I know to release. Yeah. And so then when you're doing like intense stuff too, you know, your body's going to focus more on the right stuff so that it's not just like, <sighs> but that you can stay. Breath. You can think comfortably and engage the muscles. And if I take nothing else away from you, what is my core doing? Is it engaged or not engaged? Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't always have to be like, Argh! no, the appropriate amount of work for what you're doing. That's right. That's yeah. right. Oh, that's super, super huge. Thank you so much. Once again, you can find Judy Jerome Pongo Power. Yes. Um, Pongopower.com. Dot com. <laughs> um, thank you for coming on. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful night. You have a wonderful night, Judy. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was Judy Jerome with our Women's Health. Um, it was great. I mean, I can feel my core engaged. Being conscious about good health is not only just physical, but also mental. So as you go forward in life, oh, I think our owner has just popped in. Come on, Bob Norman, say hi to our guest. Bob Norman. Hi, guest. Hi, guest. Good. All right. Well, as we um, round out this show to talk about um, women's health, just all women out there, whether you have a baby or not, know that you're beautiful and wonderfully made. Um, know that I love you and the skin that you're in. Whether that skin is taut or whether that skin is a little loose, you are uh, wrapped in excellence and exquisiteness. So keep conscious of your core, make sure you're paying attention to your abdominum, but also give yourself that self-love that's needed every day to know that you are blessed. And that's Kylima Norman. This is the New Normal Show. In two more weeks on July 9th, we will have uh, a guest to talk about schools and how they're not for Blacks and Hispanics and how can we get them to be a place where Black and Hispanic children excel. So that's going to be our next show on July 9th. Schools, New York City Public Schools or Schools in America, wherever the school is, um, it was not designed for Black and Hispanic children and how we can get them to be designed for Black and Hispanic children. That's going to be our July 9th show. But as for tonight, Women's Health, thank you so much for tuning in.